I remember it was in a couple places, and then it ended up on Placer Street, and then out here, DeWitt. It was little. <laughs> it was little. The first time we went in, it was on Nevada Street. I think that's what it was called. And uh, it's a little dinky building there. I mean, it, <laughs> the room, the whole building was no bigger than this room here, and maybe a little bit further. You just go down the hall. You know, to a Native American, it's a castle. All of us were proud. It's ours. We didn't know the government had a hand in it or anybody else had a hand in it. It was ours. We created it. Everybody was excited about it. Well, the first of walking in, well, it was very unbusy. I can remember walking in and not seeing any people in the office at all, just Diane. And the greeter was Diane. One, one person you guys really have to talk to is Diane Ricks. My name's Diane Ricks, and I'm Clinket Indian from Kluckwan, Alaska, and I was with Chapati for 41 years. That girl, I mean, she knew everybody's name, she knew where they were from. Her office was a closet. I swear, it was a closet. She was, and she was tiny. I mean, really tiny. Can I help you, she says. And I came up for the interview, and I was hired that day, and I was there forever. <laughs> I had one day with my trainer. <laughs> then they left me all alone after that, and I just kind of learned everything on my own. She had a very distinct voice, and yeah, and it was, yeah. I was like, Diane, yes. I'd pick up the phone and I'd say, good morning, Chapity Indian Health. And sometimes it was just so musical. Somebody would say, I thought I was talking to a recording. <laughs> and they were so sweet and everything. They just make my day when they say something like that. I don't know if I should tell you what I used to say when I was the dental receptionist. I used to call, confirm the patient's appointments and so I, call them up and if I got a recording I go it's your friendly tooth fairy <laughs> they tried to put her in the back room and I fought tooth and nail no way in hell I walk in there and I feel comfortable with Diane there just full of life never a dull down day she, if you did she would bring you up I just picked up on the way people treated people when I was a young, young child. And it was instilled in us when we were in the village by our elders that respect was the most important thing. She is sweet to everybody, she's kind to everybody. She's, she knows what she's doing. There were some patients where we had the fib on their appointment card just so they get there at the right time. We'd have to write down an hour earlier just for them to get there on time with all these tricks in the bag. She says, I have to have your verification. So we gave her our verification. And after that was nothing. You know, she, she knew who we were. Oh, just the, the greatest smile, the greatest, uh, you could have me have the roughest day. And it, I didn't want to come to Chapati, right? Uh, because we had Medi-Cal. And uh, that was really embarrassing. Go anywhere else, everybody saw that, that little green, white card with the stickers. And, you know, and it really, really felt judgmental, but her, she's just like, yeah, let me see your card. Just take the little sticker, and you know, and it made you feel really good about it. It brought me into uh, living with my people, the natives, because I felt like I was the only Alaskan on earth, and I didn't know anybody else, and it was scary, you know, coming down here from Alaska. And she was native, right? And she was dark like me. And, and you know, and she was somebody who was important. And that, that really made me feel good. Said, hey, I can be somebody too one day. You know, she was somebody. It was a job I loved. And I miss it to this day. I miss seeing all my friends, all the elders, and talking to them and taking care of them. I miss that. Oh, the staff always made us feel welcome and, and uh, appreciated. Like, they were happy we were there. Uh, you know, you didn't get that in any other uh, medical facility. These people knew who you were. They knew you were native. You didn't have to explain that, you know, I'm not Latino. I'm native. And, yes, we're still here, so. <laughs> you know, and I came up here to Indian Health, and it was all, 
it was altogether different. The dentist, he was, he wanted to know and, and know about you and your background and everything and made you feel at ease. Or the, the one that I was going to, I was on pins and needles all the time. But when I came up here, the, it was totally different. I believed it helped a lot because the people, they went to the doctors, but they were all white doctors. Sorry, I'm gonna say it, it's all mostly white doctors. And they come here, they might have been white doctors, but they had um, a compassion for the native people. Oh, the staff is excellent. Everybody here, that's from the staff, from the very top down, are concerned. Dr. Ba Byer ba Bailey, or I think, or Byerly, or something like that. He was our dentist. He was fantastic. And I went to Chapaday still for my uh, dental needs, you know. I had a doctor that I was very close to and uh, thought the world, his name was Dr. Byerly. And Dr. Byerly was just uh, wonderful. I'm, I'm a history buff. And uh, Dr. Byerly, I found out, was a navigator on a B-17. Just a great, great guy. His mannerism, you know, coming across and, you know, just, just trying to put people at ease. And at, at one time they had a closet of clothing for everybody, and I worked in that also too. I volunteered for that. You know, I worked in an education project in Ukiah, and we we were doing all this tutoring or whatever, everything else, counseling or whatever. And I think the most successful program we had was buying kids clothes for school, because some of those kids didn't have clothes and they wouldn't go to school. And I thought. Oh God, that's not, that's not right. We could see what was happening with the Indian kids and everything. So we decided, you know what? We're gonna see what we can do to help. So we started a women's auxiliary. And I said, well, that's not a bad idea. And some of the ladies that I was working with um, that were donating things, I said, hey, what do you think of us starting an Indian women's auxiliary? So I was the president for as long as it was in existence. We could see these kids needed clothes. They needed things. I mean, it was poor then. I mean, really poor. I talked to my dad and he said, you know what? Start a clothes closet. He said, over in Ukiah, People did things like that. You know, just that, that subtle thing, and all the counseling and all that wasn't, wasn't, how was that helping? We don't know. But that other little thing there, just having that material thing was real important for a lot of kids. And so May and I started the clothes closet. And my father, he's the one who went and gathered the clothes from all these different places. When they couldn't sell them, he would get them. And we got tons of donations. And the women were so great. They'd be over there working almost every day, and when I had time, I'd go down there, and I didn't even have to look at the racks. They had everything picked out. They'd go, oh, Diane, I just found this for you. It's right here. I knew the teachers here at Rock Creek, and he had, he was the manager of J.C. Penney's, and he said, what is brought back, we will give to you, the returns. Then I went into Montgomery Wards. <laughs> it used to be here also. And I said, hey, J.C. Penney's is doing this. Could you do this? And they said, sure, we'll help. Oh my goodness, the, the women were fantastic. And so we started managing the clothes closet. The next thing you know, we're putting on dinners for community. And the next thing you know, we're teaching swimming lessons with the Red Cross for the children, it just was a phenomenal work. I had a little guy that would come into my class and I'd change his, I had clothes that I'd taken for him and I'd change his clothes and I'd clean him up, you know, because the other kids tormented him so bad. They bullied him, unreal. You know, a little tiny five-year-old, you don't need that. And then I, I talked to the mother and the father and I asked them, please, you know, you need to do something. You need to go to Chapaday. They will help you. You know, there are programs. They have programs, too. And they did. 
Do you know that not too long ago, about three years ago, he seen me and he recognized me. I didn't recognize him. Here he is, this great big grown man. And he says, Mrs. Myers, Mrs. Myers. And I looking around, and here's this guy running up to me, and he hugs me. And he told me that. He said, you know what? That changed our lives. That changed our lives. And it just made me cry. He, he's an engineer. <laughs> yes, I am so proud. He's an engineer. How we did outreach was through community health um, services. I was working across the street in mental health and I got off work one day and I, there was a pickup loaded with salmon parked across the street and I went over and the man's name was Hickey and I asked him how can you have one of those salmon since he said you have to be a tribal member or you know card carrying Indian and so I said I am and he says well take your card in there and sign up and I found out that we were eligible for dental work. I used to help give away the fresh salmon. Hickey Murray was the board member that would go down to Nimbus Hatchery and get the truckloads of salmon for the natives here in our communities. And it was so much fun. I loved it. People would start showing up and I always had to remind them they had to bring their own containers or bags or boxes to take the salmon in. This is when they used to give them to us whole guts and everything. So they had to bring their own containers, but there were a couple that didn't get the message, so I had to sneak a couple of bags from utility closet to help them. The personal touch in Native American communities makes a huge difference. Mailings don't mean squat. People want to know who you are and what you're about. Okay, and I think those CHRs were our warriors. You know, they they went out and and touched people and made a difference. I discovered Chopper Day from my brother. Basically, was hitchhiking for what reason? I don't know. He must have been probably about thirteen, maybe fourteen years old. Kathy George picked up my brother, and she worked at Chopper Day. Found out he was native somehow. Um, that were Osage back then. You know, healthcare was. Um, not available to like low income families like it is now. My mom and dad, um, when they found out about it, signed us up right away. We all became patients and have been forever grateful for the services that we found here. We have patients come from Loyalton, Truckee, Sierraville, and we had CHRs that went and traveled all that way and picked them up and brought them. And they had appointments at the clinic all day and the CEO would make a big pot of soup up for them to have lunch with. We always had a big potluck. Yeah, you know, and the staff treats you really nice. I mean, they always treat us really well. <laughs> it's, it's not, I don't think it's uh, non-genuine. I think they really do care. They wanted to be the very best that they could be. Yes, in health. In, dent in everything, they wanted to be the very best they could be. Just knowing that we care is what helps them come through those doors, and they know we're there for them, and that's what I loved about my job. When we were on the Indian Rancheria, there were actually people living in army tents, and as a little girl, I would go play with them, and they didn't have shoes on in the wintertime. They would have to run extension cords for the lights, and I remember it snowing, and they were out running around in their bare feet and having to sleep, you know, in the cots with uh, everything frozen around them. And it, I mean, that's how people survived back then. So Chapaday or, and our Northern Sierra Indian Health Project, they were a big part of lifting the whole society up through, through healthcare. And it developed into many, many levels of assistance for Native American people locally. How it really helped me was um, not only in getting dental care, it also helped when I was a teenager because we were able to secure, not we, my mom and whoever was on the administration at the time, was able to secure Comprehensive Employment Training Act funding. And so we would be allowed to work for two, maybe two and a half months in the summer 
And what I really liked about the Comprehensive Employment Training Act is how much it taught me about working in an office environment and it really helped um, frame who I was going to become as a professional further on down the road. It really impacted my future.